Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray in His Girl Friday with Jack Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. (laughs) Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And that goes double for the ladies and gentlemen of the press because we feel a slight pang of regret for what we're about to do to them. It's been rumored that they don't ordinarily behave as our play tonight would indicate. But we gaily beg their indulgence on the ground that His Girl Friday is an exceptional case. Tonight we present a lady of the press in the engaging person of Claudette Colbert and a gentleman of the same profession played by Fred McMurray, a perfect team for the hectic happenings of the next hour. And right now I'm going to give away a trade secret about this comedy. Most of you will remember a famous play about the newspaper business called The Front Page. Well, any resemblance between that play and His Girl Friday is no coincidence, but entirely intentional. This Columbia screen hit, produced by Harry Cohn and Sam Briskin, was based on the front page, but certain differences make it practically a new story. Hildy Johnson, the hero, used to be a man. Tonight, Hildy is a lady, a very charming lady, Claudette Colbert. Walter Burns, the autocrat of the editorial rooms, is just as autocratic as ever, with Fred McMurray in the part. And between rapid adventures with an escaped maniac, a crooked sheriff, a last-minute reprieve, and a kidnapped mother-in-law, they even managed to find time for romance. I'm sure every woman will agree that the silent partner of romance is loveliness. And that's why so many millions of women choose Lux Toilet Soap. They know that Lux Toilet Soap is a very active partner of loveliness. Now a quick signal to the switchboard... The footlights brighten and the curtain rises on the first act of His Girl Friday, starring Claudette Colbert as Hildy Johnson and Fred McMurray as Walter Burns, with Jack Carson as Bruce Baldwin. When a young and charming ex-wife drops in to see her ex-husband, there usually arises what is known as a delicate situation particularly when she brings along her new fiancé. But Hildy Johnson, our ex-wife, was never fazed by a delicate situation. Bruce Baldwin, the new fiancé, was not consulted in the matter. And Walter Burns, the ex-husband and managing editor of the Morning Post, doesn't know about it yet. He's in his office as Hildy barges cheerfully through the city room, her fiancé a few steps to the rear. Hi, Hildy! Hiya, Ruth. Hello, Maisie. Hildy, Hildy Johnson. How are you? Hey, what are you doing here? You coming back to work, Hildy? No, just visiting. This is my fiancé, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Tell me, is the Lord of the Universe in? Mr. Burns? Yes, he's in, in a bad humor. <laughs> is that unusual? He's got Louis Peluso in there with him. You want to be announced, Hildy? No, no, no. I'll blow my own horn. Bruce, he's in, so you'd better wait here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Even ten minutes is a long time to be away from you. What did you say? Oh, I... I'll go on, Bruce. Well, I, I said even ten minutes is a long time to be away from you. <laughs> uh, I heard you the first time. I like it. That's why I have to say it again. You know, I can stand being spoiled a little. The gentleman I'm going in to see did very little spoiling. I'd like to spoil him just once. Are you sure you don't want me to go in with you? No, no, I can handle it. You just keep your eye on that door. See, Walter Burns, managing editor. I'll be coming out in ten minutes. Well, if it gets rough... Remember, I'm here. I'll come running, partner. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Okay, call me right back. Morning, Mr. Burns. Hello, Louie. Hey, boss, your ex-wife is here. Hello. Hello, I can't hear you. How have you been, Mr. Peluso? How's the big slot machine king? No, I ain't doing that no more. I'm retired, know what I mean? No. I'm a newspaper man now, waiting for Mr. Burns. Mm. Okay, okay, goodbye. Hildy! Hello, Hildy. Hello, Walter. Say, this is great. Outside, Louie. Sure. Gee, honey, you look swell. I... Walter, I, I've got to see you right away. No, not now, Duffy. But listen. No, not now, I'm busy. Walter, I thought you ought to know that the governor did not sign that reprieve. What? And tomorrow morning, Earl Williams dies and makes a sucker out of us. What are you going to do? Uh, excuse me, Hildy. Oh, sure. Get the governor on the phone, Duffy. I can't. He's out fishing. Well, get him anyhow. Tell him if he reprieves Earl Williams, we'll support him for senator. What? 
Tell him the morning post will be behind him, hook, line, and sinker. But you can't do that. Why not? Because we've been against him for six years. All right, after we get the reprieve, we'll be against him again. But, Walter... Come on, Duffy, get going. All right, all right. Well, Walter, I see you're still at it. Yeah, first time I ever double-crossed the governor. Hildy, you look prettier than ever. <laughs> well, thanks. You mind if I sit down? Well, there's a lamp burning in the window for you, honey. I jumped out of that window a long time ago. Yeah. How long since we've seen each other? Well, let's see, I was in Reno six weeks, and then Bermuda, oh, about four months, I guess. Seems like yesterday to me. Mm. Maybe it was yesterday, Hildy. Been seeing me in your dreams? No, no. Mama doesn't dream about you anymore, Walter. You wouldn't know the old girl now. Oh, uh, yes, I would. I'd know you any time, any place, anywhere. Any place, anywhere. anywhere. Yes, you're repeating yourself, honey. That's the speech you made the night you proposed. Yeah, I noticed you still remember it. Of course I remember it. If I hadn't remembered it, I wouldn't have divorced you. Yeah. You know, Hildy, I sort of wish you hadn't done that. Done what? Divorce me. Makes a fellow lose all faith in himself. Gives him a feeling he isn't wanted. Now, look, Junior, that's what divorces are for. No oh, nonsense. You've got an old-fashioned idea that divorces are something that lasts forever. But divorces don't mean a thing nowadays, Hildy. Just a few words mumbled over you by a judge. We've got something between us nothing can change. Oh, I suppose you're right in a way. Sure, I'm right. I am fond of you, you know. That a girl. I often wish you weren't such a stinker. It's <laughs> a nice thing to say. Why did you promise not to fight the divorce and then do everything you could to gum up the whole world? Oh, Hildy, I only acted like any husband that didn't want to see his home broken up. What home? What home? Don't you remember the home I promised you? Sure I do. <laughs> That's the one we were to have right after our honeymoon. Yes, the honeymoon. Now, was that my fault? Did I know the coal mine was going to cave in? I intended to be with you on our honeymoon, Hildy. Honest, I did. All I know is that instead of two weeks in Atlantic City with my bridegroom... I spent two weeks in a coal mine with John Krupski. You don't deny that, do you? Deny it? I'm proud of it. We beat the whole country on that story. Well, suppose we did. That isn't what I got married for. Oh, Hildy, what's the use of fighting? I'll tell you what. You come back to work in the paper, and if we find we can't get along in a friendly way, we'll get married again. What? Sure. I haven't got any hard feelings. <laughs> Walter, you're wonderful in a loathsome sort of way. You mean you won't come back to work in the paper? You're right, Mr. Burns, the first time today. You got a better offer, huh? You bet I've got a better offer. All right, go on, take it. Work for somebody else. That's the gratitude I get. What were you when you came here five years ago? A little college girl from a school of journalism. I took a little doll-faced punk oh, and... Oh, you wouldn't have taken me if I hadn't been doll-faced. No, well, whatever. I made a great reporter out of you. It just didn't work out, Walter. Well, it would have worked if you'd been satisfied with just being editor and reporter. But not you. You had to marry me and spoil everything. <laughs> I suppose I proposed to you. Well, you practically did. Made Google eyes at me for two years. Why, you... Hey, put down that inkwell. Ah, Hilda, you're losing your eyes. Used to be able to pitch better than that. Hello? Hello, Walter. This is Duffy again. Oh. Oh, hello, Sweeney. What can I do for you? Now, wait a minute. I'm not Sweeney. I'm Duffy. Sweeney, you can't do that to me. Not today of all days. What's the matter with you? Are you loony? This is Duffy. Now, listen, Sweeney. This is no time Walter, to... Walter, I have to. All right, then. If you have to, you have to, I guess. He had to, huh? How do you like that? Everything happens to me. What's the matter? Sweeney, the only man in the paper that can write me has to pick today to have a baby. Well, he didn't do it on purpose, did he? I don't care whether he did or not. He's supposed to cover the Earl Williams case, and where is he? Walking up and down in a hospital. Is there no sense of honor in this country? Haven't you got anybody else? No, there's nobody else in the paper who can write. This will break me and I... Hildy. Uh-uh. Hildy, you've got to help no, me. No, sir. Don't let me down in my darkest hour. It'll bring us together again, Hildy, like we used oh, to be. Oh, scram, Sungali. Well, if you won't do it for love, how about money? I'll, I'll raise you 25 bucks a week. Will you listen to me, you great big bumble-headed baboon? Do you see this on my finger? Do you know what it is? It's an engagement ring. Engagement ring? No. Well, I tried to tell you right away, but you would start reminiscing. I'm getting married, Walter, and I'm also getting as far away from the newspaper business as I can get. Huh? I'm through. No, no, Hildy. You can get married all you want, but you can't quit the newspaper business. No, why not? It'd kill you. You're a newspaper man. You're a journalist, Hildy. A journalist? Now, what does that mean? Peeking through keyholes, chasing after fire engines, stealing pictures off old ladies. Oh, I know all about reporters, Walter. A lot of Daffy Budinskis running around without a nickel in their pockets. And for what? Just to... Oh. Oh, well, what's the use? You wouldn't know what it means to me anyway. I want to be respectable and live a halfway normal life. Well, the point is, I'm through. Where'd you meet this man? Bermuda. Rich, huh? No, he's not what you'd call rich. What's his line? He's in the insurance business. The insurance business? Well, that's a good, honest business, isn't it? Oh, sure. It's also adventurous and romantic. Now, oh, listen, Hildy, I can't picture you being surrounded by policy. I and... can, and what's more, I like it. Besides, he forgets the office when he's with me. He doesn't treat me like an animal either, Walter. He treats me like a woman. Oh, he does, does mm -hmm. he? How'd I treat you, like a water buffalo? I don't know about water buffaloes, but I know about him. Oh, he's kind and sweet and he's considerate. He, he wants a home and children. Yeah. 
Sounds more like a guy I ought to marry. What's his name? <laughs> Baldwin. Bruce Baldwin. 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 I knew a Baldwin once, a horse thief in Mississippi. Couldn't be the same fellow, could it? No, you're not talking about the man I'm marrying tomorrow. Tomorrow? As soon as that, huh? Yeah. Now. Uh, well, at last I got out when I came up here to tell you. I guess there isn't any more of the story. So long, Walter. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Hildy. You kind of took the wind out of my sail. Look, honey, I, I just want to wish you everything I couldn't give you. Thank you, Walter. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to meet him. I'm more or less particular about who my wife marries. Where is he? Oh, he's right on the job, waiting for me outside. Oh, well, you mind if I meet him? <laughs> of course not. Well, then, come on. Let's see this paragon. Is he as good as you say? He's better. Well, then what does he want with you? <laughs> well, now you got me. <laughs> Bruce! Bruce, dear! Yes, Hildy? Bruce, I want you to meet Mr. Byrne. Mr. Baldwin, my fiancé. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Byrne? Oh, go on. It's a gag. Huh? It's a gag. You're not Bruce Baldwin. Walter, what are you trying to Really, do? is he? Certainly. Bruce Baldwin. Oh, well, I, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Baldwin. Hilda, you led me to believe you were marrying a much older man. Oh, really? And what did I say that oh, led you to... Oh, don't worry about it. I realize you didn't mean older in years. Oh. Do you always carry an umbrella, Bruce? Yeah, well, <laughs> it looked a little cloudy this morning. That's right, it did. Rubbers, too, I hope. Uh-huh. That's fine. Man ought to be prepared for any emergency. Bruce, I think we'd better be running along. Yeah, we better get going. Where are we going? Oh, I'm taking you two to lunch. Uh, Hilly, didn't you tell him? No, she didn't. You're wasting your time, Walter. It won't do a bit of good. Oh, no. Glad to do it. So you two are going to get married, huh? You're getting a great girl, Bruce. I realize that. Yes, and you're getting something else, too, Bruce. You're getting a great newspaper man. No orchids, Walter. One of the best I ever knew. Sorry to see you go, Hildy. Darn sorry. <laughs> I'd like to believe you meant that. I do mean it. But I know what you want, Hildy. You want a home. Well, I'll certainly try to give her one. I know you will, Bruce. Where are you going to live? Albany. Albany, eh? Got a family there, Bruce? Oh, just my mother. Oh, your mother, huh? You going to live with her? Well, just for the first year. Mm, that'll be nice. A home with Mother. <laughs> In Albany, too. Ow, hey, Hilda, what'd you kick me for? I'm sorry, Walter. My foot must have slipped. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's have a drink, shall we? What do you say? Hey, guys. Oh, no, not for me. I've got to buy the tickets yet and check the baggage. We're taking the sleeper for Albany. Oh, are you leaving today? Uh-huh, 4 o'clock. <laughs> We're getting married tomorrow. Well, let me get this straight. You mean you're taking the sleeper today and then getting married tomorrow? Oh, well, it's not like that. Well, what is it like? Oh, poor Walter. He'll toss and turn all night, Bruce. You'd better tell him Mother's coming along, too. Mother? Well, your mother kicked the bucket three years ago. Oh, no, no, my mother. My mother. Oh, your mother. Yeah. Well, that relieves my mind. <laughs> no, it was cruel to let you suffer that way, wasn't it? Isn't Walter sweet, Bruce? Always wanting to protect me. Well, I, I admit I wasn't much of a husband, but you can always count on me. Oh, Mr. Burns. Yeah, yeah, I guess. You want on the phone. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, will you? I'll be right back. Not at all. Don't be long. We've got to leave. Right away. Hello? Hello, Walter. This is Duffy. Oh, Duffy, I'm glad you called. About that lead. No, forget it. Listen. Is there any way we could stop the 4 o'clock train to Albany from leaving town? Sure. We could dynamite it. Oh, okay. Never mind. Now, get this. Get hold of Sweeney and send him out of town on a two-week vacation right away. But, Walter, he's covering the Williams hanging. Keep your shirt on. Hilly's coming back in the paper. She is? Yeah, she doesn't know it yet, but she's staying. And listen, tell Louie to stick around the office. I may need him. In the meantime, I kind of wish you'd hurry up. You know, Hildy, he's not such a bad fellow. No, he should make some girl really happy. Slap happy. <laughs> I sort of like him. He's got a lot of charm. Yeah, he comes by it naturally. His grandfather was a snake. Shh. <laughs> Here he is. Say, he looks all upset. Uh, sorry, folks. Something wrong, Walter? Yeah, bad business. What's the matter? Uh, the Earl Williams case. Oh, yes, I've been reading about that. What's the lowdown? Uh, simple, honey. Poor little dope lost his job. Went nuts and shot a cop who was coming after him to quiet him down, and now they're going to hang him tomorrow. Well, if he was out of his mind when he did it, why doesn't the state just put him away? Because there happens to be an election coming up in a couple of days. And nothing brings in the votes like a good old-fashioned hanging. Well, I should think you could show the man wasn't responsible. No, that's not so easy. Well, maybe it's not so hard, either. What do you mean, Hilly? Well, don't they have to have another expert examine him before they hang him? Oh, sure. A guy named Egelhoff is going to do it. Why? Well, look, Walter. You get an interview with Earl Williams. Yeah? Print Egelhoff's statement. Yeah? And right alongside it, you know, double column, you run your interview. Alienist says he's sane. Interview shows he's goofy. Hildy, you could do it. You could save that poor devil's life. No, you could... no, no. Oh, that's right. You're going away. I forgot. Well, how long would the interview take? Well, only an hour for the interview and another hour to write it. That's all. Well, Hildy, we could take the six o'clock train if it would save a man's life. Well, sure. No. Walter, if you want to save Earl Williams' life, you can just interview him yourself. Or else get Sweeney. He's the best man you've got on that paper for self-death. Uh, poor Sweeney. Duffy just told me. His wife finally had twins. Isn't that terrible? So Sweeney goes out to celebrate and falls down a flight of steps. Sweeney has twins, so Earl Williams hangs tomorrow. Oh, now, Walter, it isn't as bad as that. Oh, look, Bruce, argue with her, will you? Argue with her. Otherwise, you're going on a honeymoon with blood on your hands. 
How can you have any happiness after that? All through the years, you remember that a man went to the gallows because she was too selfish to wait two hours. Wait a minute. Wait a... What's the matter? I just remembered. Sweeney only got married four months ago. Uh, uh, you win. I'm then like... Mrs. Sweeney didn't have twins? No, honey. The twins were Walter. No, it was nothing. Here, we'll start all over again. I'll offer you two a business proposition. Bruce, I understand you're in the insurance game. Don't listen to him, Bruce. I know all his tricks from Hilly, I'm talking to him. Now, look, Bruce. You persuade Hilly to do this story, and you can write a nice, fat policy for me. What do you say? Oh, no, Mr. Burns. I won't use my wife for business purposes. Wait a minute. How big a policy, Walter? Oh, 25000 What? 50000 100 Bruce, what's the commission on a $100,000 policy? Oh, around $1,000. So what's wrong with $1,000? How long would it take to get him examined? Well, I could get a company doctor here in 20 minutes. Okay, I'll get the story. Now you're talking. You keep out of this. Bruce, take him down to the office and see if they'll allow anything on that carcass of his. Say, I'm better now than I ever was. That's nothing to brag about. And look, Bruce, after you get the check, you phone me. I'll be in the press room of the criminal court building. Oh, Walter. Yeah? You, I think you'd better make that a certified check. What do you think I am, a crook? Yes. All right, it'll be certified. Want my fingerprints? No, thanks. I've still got those. Bruce, how much money have you got on you? Well, you know everything we have. Five hundred dollars. Well, give me the five hundred. But I have to get the ticket. No, I'll buy the ticket. But Hildy, I... Oh, really, darling, I know what I'm doing. He'd get you in a crap game. Now, please. Well, all right. Here you are. Thanks. And when you finish examining this imperfect specimen, remember now, call me. Press room, criminal court building. I will. Be careful now. Never mind me. Watch out for yourself. You're in bad company. <laughs> Speaking. Hey, who is this? Oh, the sheriff. Oh, hiya, sheriff. Oh, wait a minute, I'll ask him. Hey. Hey. Huh? Sheriff Hartwell says we're making too much noise. Tell him to go soak his head. Go soak your head, sheriff. I got three aces. Hiya, boys. Hey, look, it's Hildy Trump. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Joe. Hiya, Hildy. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Go back to work, Hildy? No, oh, no. This is just a farewell appearance. I'm going into business for myself. What doing? I'm getting married tomorrow. Oh, no. You're not fooling us, are you, Hildy? No, on the level. Look what I've got right here. Three tickets for Albany on the six o'clock train tonight. What do you mean, three tickets? Me and my beau and... Hats off, boys. His sweet darling Ma. What? Your mother-in-law? What kind of marriage is that? No, it's going to be all right. I'm going to settle down. I'm through with the newspaper business. Oh, sure. Hey, can you picture Hildy singing lullabies and hanging out the dieties? And swapping lies over the back fence? Sour grapes, boys. She'll be back as soon as she gets tired beating rugs. You... Too bad you can't stick around to Lamara, Hildy. You're missing a nice hanging. Say, I have to do a yarn on Williams. Did he know what he was doing when he fired that gun? Yes, ask us, no. If you ask the state alienist, the answer is yes. Press room. Huh? Who? Oh, yeah, she's here. Is that for me? Yes. Here, hand it over. Hello? Hello, Hildy. Oh, yes, darling. Did you get the check from Walter? Sure, certified and everything. I got it right here in my pocket. In your pocket, that's fine. Uh -huh. uh, now, wait a minute. Maybe it isn't so fine. Where are you? I'm in Mr. Burr's office. Well, now, look, Bruce. I don't want you to carry that check around in your pocket. Hildy, it's all right. Check is made out to the company. Nobody can cash it, and anyway, I wouldn't lose a check like that. It means too much to us. Don't worry, Hildy. Now, look, Bruce, do what I say, will you? I don't want you to carry that check in your pocket, please. Yeah, but I think it's now, all right. It's an old newspaper superstition that the first big check you get, you put in the lining of your hat, see? It brings you luck. Well, Hildy, that's silly. I know, darling, but do it for me. Oh, all right. And look, tell Walter I'm going right over to Earl Williams' cell to get the interview. I'll phone it in as soon as I can. I'll tell him. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Everything all right, Bruce? Oh, uh, yes. Hildy said to tell you she'd get right to work. Oh, fine. Well, I must be going now. Thanks again, Mr. Burns. Oh, don't mention it, Bruce. Don't mention it. I'd do anything for you and Hildy. Yes, I'm beginning to realize that. Well, goodbye, Mr. Burns. Goodbye, Bruce. Oh, and don't forget your umbrella. Might rain, you know. Huh? Oh, thanks. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Louie. Louie, come in here. Yeah, boss. Come here. Listen, did you see the guy that just left here? That dope? Yeah, I want you to follow him. He's on his way to the railroad station to get the 6 o'clock train for Albany. He's not supposed to get there, see? I get it. What'll I do to him, boss? I don't care what you do to him, but try to keep it legal. Leave it to me. Hello? Hello, is this the press room? I want to speak to Miss Johnson. I... Hello, who is this? Hilly, is this you? Oh, hello, Bruce. What is it? Hilly, something terrible has happened. I'm in jail. What? Some fella says I stole his watch. Stole his watch? What are you talking about? Some fella on the street. He said I stole his watch, and then he had me arrested. Well, what fella? Who? I never saw him before. His name is Louis Peluso. Louis Peluso? Oh, Bruce, where are you? I'm in jail. He says that oh, I... Oh, no, I know. What jail? 
The 43rd Precinct. Hilly, I didn't steal his... Oh, I know you didn't. Never mind that now. Bruce, sit tight. I'll have you out in ten minutes. Hello, Murphy calling. I'm still in the press room. Nothing new on the Williams case. I'll call you if something happens. I don't know. Oh, boys. Well, oh, Sheriff Hartwell. Oh, Sheriff, this is an honor. Got the kidding, boys. Here, I got the tickets for the hanging. One each, that's all. Hey, Pete, why can't you hang this guy at 5 o'clock instead of 7? Sure, it wouldn't hurt you, and we can make the city addition. Well, that's kind of raw, fellas. You can't hang a man in his sleep just to please a newspaper. No, but you can reprieve him twice so the hanging is three days before election. Yeah, so you and the mayor can run on a law and order ticket. Honest, boys, I had absolutely nothing to do with those reprieves. Yeah? How do we know there won't be another reprieve tonight? What if this guy Egelhopper finds Williams insane? He won't find him insane because he isn't. He's just as sane as I am. Sane? Yeah. Oh, you fellas make me <laughs> tired. You try to do a decent turn for you want to. Hiya, Hildy. Where have you been? To the 43rd precinct. Hello, Post. This is Hildy Johnson. Get Walter Burns on the phone. What's the matter, Hildy? You look sore. Oh, you stick around and watch your lady burn. Uh-oh. Something Hello? Hello? Hello, Walter. This is Hildy. Hello, oh, yeah, Hildy. I've got some news for you. Oh, smart. You got the interview? Yeah, I've got something much more Wait important. Oh, Maybe quiet, you better quiet, get a pencil and take it down. All set, Hildy. Let it go. Now get this, you double-crossing chimpanzee. There isn't going to be any interview. Wait a minute, And Hildy. there isn't going to be any story. And that certified check of yours leaves with me in 20 minutes. I wouldn't cover the burning of Rome for you if they were just lighting it. What are you and if about? I ever lay my two eyes on you again, I'll hammer that monkey skull of yours so it rings like a Chinese gong. Hey, what are you sore about? So- oh, you don't know what I'm sore about? No. Well, maybe you'd better get Louie to tell you the story of his watch. Goodbye. Oh, oh, nice going, Hilly. That's telling him. That gentleman was my farewell speech to journalism. Goodbye, boys. I'm off to Albany. Send us a postcard, kid. I'll do that. When will we see you again, Hilly? Well, the next time you see me, I'll be riding in the limousine giving out interviews on success. So long. What the... Is that a shot? It sure sounded like it. Hey, listen. It's a jail break. Come here, that window. What? Hey. Hey, what's the matter down there? What's happened? What's that gate? Close that gate. Who lady? Who got away? Who was it? Where are Williams? Where are Williams? Where is he? Give me a phone. Hello, Give me a phone. Hello, Tribune. Bill Williams just broke jail. Why are you shooting, you dope? Look out where you're aiming. We better get out of here. There's some phones in the state's attorney's office. Come on. Hey, Hello, Post. Hildy Johnson. Get me Walter Burns, quick. Hello, Walter. This is Hildy. All right, listen. Hello, Earl Williams just escaped from jail. What? That's all I know. Stick by the phone till you hear from me. Hilly, have you covered yeah, yeah, the job? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'm on the job. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Claudette Colbert, Fred McMurray, and Jack Carson will bring you Act Two of His Girl Friday. And now, oh, Sally. What does that remind you of? Why, that tune always makes me think of the old South, of dashing young officers courting charming little southern bells. It it makes me think of magnolia trees and crinolines and organdy ruffles and, well, Scarlet O'Hara. Good. And this tune, Sally. Oh, everybody thinks of Lux Toilet Soap when they hear that, Mr. Ruick. Yes, Lux Toilet Soap Right, and now if you add those two tunes together It reminds you that the makers of Lux Toilet Soap Have captured the charm of the Old South for you In their exquisite Scarlet O'Hara brooch The brooch is a lovely simulated cameo Designed after one worn by Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind The piece consists of a pure white head in classic profile Against a glistening ebony background It's the sort of brooch every woman longs to own and would be more than proud to wear. Because the brooch is truly beautiful, and it's expensive-looking, too, with its distinctive gold-finished setting. It has every single detail. It has so many touches that make for beauty and quality, including a safety class. Well, don't forget to tell everyone how easy it is to get one of those brooches, Mr. Ruick. Yes, Sally, thanks. It's as easy as, well, as falling in love with a lovely Lux Toilet Soap complexion. Now, here's all you do. Just go to your dealer... Buy three cakes of gentle white Lux toilet soap and ask him for an order blank. Or write your name and address on a piece of paper and send it with the three Lux toilet soap wrappers and 15 cents in coins, no stamps, please, to Lux toilet soap, Box 1, New York City. I'll repeat that. Lux toilet soap, Box 1, New York City. It's as easy as that. And your Scarlet O'Hara brooch will be mailed to you promptly. Only, please don't delay. With your brooch, you'll receive an illustrated order blank for handsome matching pieces to complete your Scarlet O'Hara ensemble. Ring, 
Bracelet, pendant, earrings. All beautifully designed, all at amazing bargain prices. So get your three cakes of Lux toilet soap tomorrow and send the wrappers and 15 cents in coin for your scarlet or hair approach to Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. This offer is good only in the United States. And now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of His Girl Friday, starring Claudette Colbert as Hilde Johnson and Fred McMurray as Walter Burns, with Jack Carson as Bruce Baldwin. With the maniac Earl Williams roaming free in the city, things are happening fast around the criminal courts building. The press room is deserted for the moment. When suddenly, Hildy Johnson sweeps through the door and grabs the telephone. Hello. Hello, Post. Walter Burns, right away. Hildy? Walter, listen. I've got the whole story on how Williams escaped, and I've got it exclusive. Exclusive? Yeah, that's right. And it's a pip. But it cost me 450 bucks to tear it out of Cooley. Well, never mind. What's the story? Now, just a minute. I'm telling you first, I had to give him all the money I had on me. And it wasn't exactly mine. It's Bruce's money, and I want it back. Bruce's money? Sure, you'll get it. I, I swear it on my mother's grave. All right. Wait a minute. Your mother's alive. Oh, don't be so technical, Hilly. What's, what's the story? All right, here. It's the jailbreak of your dreams. Listen, this expert Egelhoff with a profound thinker from New York was giving Williams a final sanity test in the sheriff's office. Yeah. You know, sticking a lot of pins in him to get his reflexes. Yeah. Well, he decided to reenact the crime exactly as it had taken place so as to study William's powers of coordination. Uh-huh. Of course, he had to have a gun to reenact the crime with. And who do you suppose supplied it? Who? Sheriff Peter B. Hartwell, B for brain. No kidding, Hilly. Oh, I'm not kidding. I'm not good enough to make this one up. Go on. Well, the sheriff gave his gun to the professor, the professor gave it to Earl, and Earl shot the professor in the stomach and jumped out of the window. Hilly, this is terrific. Was Egel Hopper hurt? No, not badly. They took him to the county hospital where they're awfully afraid he'll recover. Oh, that's great work, Hilly. Yeah. Now, what about my 450 bucks? You'll get it in 15 minutes. I'd better get it in 15 minutes. Listen, Hilly, have I ever lied to you? I tell you, you'll have that door right away. Louie's right here in the office, and I'll send him over to the press room with it. All right, Walter. I'll trust you once more, but don't fail me, will you? Bruce is waiting downstairs in a taxi. Oh, he is? Uh, wait a minute, Hildy. Hey, Louie. Louie, come here. Yeah, boss. Is that bangle dame outside? You mean that blonde babe? Yeah. Get her in here. Walter! Walter, Walter, listen! Just a minute, Hildy. Be right with you. Here she is, boss. Hiya, Walter. Come here. Now, get this straight. There's a guy waiting in a taxi in front of the criminal courts building. His name is Bruce Baldwin. Walter! Get over there right away. You want me to go into my act? Yeah, can you handle him? I never flopped on you yet, have I? All right, beat it. You've only got ten minutes. Say, hey, Walter, I'm still on here. Okay, Hildy, sorry to keep you waiting. Walter, about that $450. I know, I know. Hold on a minute. Hey, Louie, I need $450 in counterfeit money. $450? Yeah, in counterfeit. Can you I, get it for me? I got that much right here in my pocket. Well, that's a coincidence. Take it over to Hildy. Do you want I should tell her it's phony? No, you don't. Just give it to her. Okay. Hello, Hildy. It's on the way. Goodbye, Hildy. Oh, and Hildy, good luck on your honeymoon, honey. Press room. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hey, Hildy Johnson. Right here. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Hildy. Bruce, I thought you were waiting in the taxi. Hildy, something awful has happened. What? Hildy, listen. I'm in jail again. Oh, for the love of... What for? Well, they called it mashing. Oh, you didn't, did you? Oh, no, Hildy. I was sitting right in the taxi right where you left me, and the young lady seemed to have a dizzy spell, and... Well, was she a blonde? Yeah, she's a blonde, very blonde. Oh, and... never mind. I know what happened. Bruce, where are you? The 26th precinct. All right, I'll get you out as soon as I can. Goodbye. Anything I can do, Hildy? Yeah, you can stab Walter Burns in the back for me, that dirty double... Oh. Listen, I've got to bail somebody out again. How much money have you got? Dollar eighty. Andy, how about you? Sixty-four cents. Oh, thanks. You can buy an annuity. Hey, Hildy, look sore again. Uh, press room, Q speaking. No, I can't get an official statement yet. Hey, boys, here's the mayor. Uh, wait a minute. The mayor just walked in. I'll call you back. Well, what do you say, mayor? How about a statement? Yeah, come on, mayor. Get quiet, out of here. quiet, quiet, please. Don't pester me now, boys. I've got a lot on my mind. Have you seen Sheriff Hartwell? It's hard to tell you, Ronnie. You see, there's so many cockroaches around here. Now, wait a minute. What about that statement, John? Sure, we've got to press in 20 minutes. Boys, boys. Give us a statement on the election. Yeah, what effect is all this going to have on the voters? None whatsoever. How can an unavoidable misfortune like this have any influence on the upright citizens of our fair city? Baloney. Uh, Excuse me, boys. This is Anna here. Where's the mayor? Uh, hi, Sheriff. Here, Sheriff. Mayor, I've been looking all over for you. I've been looking for you. 
We've got to have a talk, Sheriff. And so do we. What's the dope, Sheriff? How did Williams get out? And what was he doing in your office, Sheriff? Where did he get the gun? Now, wait, wait. Just a minute, boys, and I'll tell you. I've got him located. Oh, Williams? Where? Out at the place he used to live on Center Street. I just got the tape. Why didn't you oh, think so? The rifle squad's just going out. Well, Mayor, you want to see me? I certainly did. Pete, you're through. Through? I mean, I'm scratching your name off the ticket Tuesday and running Sherman in your place. Oh, now, Fred, I'm doing everything I can. Well, it ain't enough. Do you realize there are 200,000 votes at stake and if Earl Williams don't hang, we're going to lose him? But we're going to hang him, Fred. He can't get away. Come in. Excuse me, I'm looking for... What do you for... want? Are you Sheriff Hartwell? I'm Hartwell. What is it? Uh, you're a hard fellow to find, Sheriff. I have a message here from the governor. What's from the governor? It's a reprieve for Earl Williams. For who? Earl Williams' reprieve. Pete, you said there wasn't going to be a reprieve. Fred, please. It frightens me to think of what I'd like to do to you. Fred. Shut up. You, come here. You mean me? Yeah. Who else was there when the governor gave you this reprieve? Nobody. He was out fishing. Pete, get the governor on the phone. Oh, he's not there now. He's out duck shooting. Fishing? Duck shooting? A guy does nothing more strenuous for 40 years than play pinochle. He gets elected governor, and right away he thinks he's Tarzan. Look at this reprieve, Fred. Insane, he says. He knows very well that Williams isn't insane. Well, I never Pure met the politics. man, but... Uh... Hello? Yes, yes, this is Hartwell. What? Where? Holy Moses. Hold the wire a minute. Well, what is it? They got Williams. They got him surrounded. The rifle squad has him out in his house. Tell him to hold the wire. Hold the wire. Cover up that transmitter. You, come here. Now, listen. You never arrived with this reprieve, get it? Yes, I did. Don't you remember? I came in that door. Well, how much do you make a week? Uh, twenty-two fifty. How would you like to have a job for three hundred and fifty dollars a month? That's almost a hundred dollars a week. Who me? Well, who do you think? Uh, now listen. They need a fellow like you in the city sealer's office. In the what? In the city sealer's office. You mean I should work in the city? Yes. Oh, my wife wouldn't like that. Well, why not? Well, you see, my wife lives uh, with my family in the country. Well, that's all right. Just bring her here. We'll pay all your expenses. Oh, this puts me in a peculiar position. No, it doesn't. Now, remember, you never delivered this reprieve. You, uh, you got caught in traffic or something. Now, get out of here and don't let anybody see you. Yes, but how do I, I mean, know? I'm in my office tomorrow. Oh, by the way, what's your name? Pettibone. What's yours? Pettibone. Really? No, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> all you've got to do is to lay low and keep your mouth shut. Well, I'm tired anyhow. All right, now beat it. Beat it. Okay, but it's a funny thing. Come on, beat it. Get out. Get out. Hello? Hello, wait a minute. What will I tell him, Mayor? Tell him to shoot to kill. What? You heard what I said. But the reprieve... Quiet Fred. and do as I tell you. Hello, Olson. Shoot to kill. That's orders. Come in, come in. Hiya, Hildy. Oh, it's you, you double-crossing hyena. What did you and Mr. Burns pull this time? What's the matter, Hildy? Don't give me that innocent stuff. You had Mr. Baldwin thrown in the jug again. Who, me? Oh, shut up. Did you bring that money? Oh, yeah, 400 bucks. 450? Oh, all right, you can't blame a guy for trying. Here, and you better give me a receipt. I'll give you a scar. Yeah, I got plenty of them. So long, Hildy. So long, you rat. Hello. Hello, operator. I want to call the 26th Precinct Police Station. Stop that phone till I'll kill you. Never mind, operator. Hello, Earl. You're not going to tell anybody where I am. I got away from them, across the roof, down the fire escape. They'll never get me. Earl, put down that gun. No, no, I won't. No, you're not going to shoot me, Earl. I'm your friend, remember? Yeah. I was in your cell a little while ago. I, I've got to write that story about you, remember? You you don't want to hurt your friends, don't Earl. You move. Maybe you are my friend, and maybe you're not. You can't trust anybody in this crazy world. I don't blame you. If I were in your place, I wouldn't trust anybody either. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I was just going to pull down the shade so no one will see no, you. No, you're not. You were going to get somebody. No, I wouldn't get anybody. Else. Yes, you will. You get him after me again. I, I won't let you do it. No. I'll kill you. No, Earl, don't shoot. Uh, I guess I fired all the shells. Oh. Earl, give me that gun. Oh, I'm awful tired. Now, listen. Those reporters will be coming back here any minute. I don't care. I'm not afraid to die. I was telling the fellow that when he handed me the gun. Keep quiet. Hello, Post. Walter Burns. Waking me up in the middle of the night. Talking to me about things they don't understand. Shut up. I wish they'd take me back and hang me. They will if you don't keep quiet. Burns talking. Walter, Hildy. Something terrific's happened. You better get down here right away. What's the matter? I've got Earl Williams. What? Earl Williams right here in the press room. I've got him. On the level? So help me, but hurry. I need you. Open up. Hildy, open up. Walter. 
Well, where is he? Oh, I thought you'd never get here. Come on in, Louie. Close that door. Okay, boss. I brought Louie along just in case. Now, where's William? He's in the desk. What? What desk? That's the big one there. I stuck him in there and pulled down the roller. No. Well, open it up. Let's get a look at him. Hiya, Williams. Let me out of here. I can't stand it in here. Shut up. You're sitting pretty. Hey, get back in there. Who's that at the door? I don't Kildy. know. Kildy, let me in. Oh, for the love of Mike, it's Bruce's mother. Kildy, come in. Hey, Kildy, are you crazy? Don't let that dame in here. I've got to. I'll get rid of her right away. Well. Oh, come in, Mother. Oh. Don't you mother me, playing cat and mouse with my poor boy, keeping him locked up. Mother, I can explain Making that. us miss two trains and you supposed to get married tomorrow. I'll go with you in five minutes. You don't have to go with me at all. Just give me Bruce's money and you can stay here forever as far as I'm concerned. Oh, please, Mother. Let me out of here. Shut up. What was that? What, lady, what? There's a man in that desk. Oh, don't be silly, lady. What would a man be doing in a desk? There's something funny here. Shut up, will you, lady? Don't shut up. You're doing something wrong. Oh, Mother, please. Louie, get this name out of here. Oh, no, wait a minute. Go on, Louie. Take her over to Pollock Mike. No. Hello, lady. Let me alone. My name is Louie Pelusa. Oh, Walter. Lock her up and see that she doesn't talk to anyone on the way. Tell! What do I tell him? Tell him it's a case of DTs. Go on. Let me go. Come Let on, go. lady. Come Don't worry, on. Mother. This is only temporary. Oh, Walter, what have you done? Come here, Hildy. Now, let me go. I've got to go with her. I've got to get Bruce out of jail. Get Bruce out of jail? How can you worry about a man who's resting in a nice, quiet station, when the police station, when this is going on? Hildy, this is war. You can't desert me now. Oh, get off that trapeze. You've got your story right over there in the desk. Go on. Smear it all over the front page. Earl Williams captured by the morning post. But I'm getting out. Oh, you're drooling, idiot. What do you mean you're getting out? There are 365 days in the year you can get married, but how many times have you got a murderer locked up in a desk? Once in a lifetime. Hildy, you got the whole city by the seat of its pants. Oh, sure, I know. You I know. know, you know. You've got the brains of a pancake. That wasn't a story you covered. It was a revolution. This is the greatest yarn in journalism since Livingston discovered Stanley. It's the other way around. Oh, don't get technical. You realize what you've done? You've taken a city that's been graft-ridden for 40 years under the same old gang, and with one yarn, you're kicking them out. What? Sure. We'll make such monkeys out of these ward healers next Tuesday that nobody will vote for them. Not even their own wives. I get it, I get it. You've kicked over the whole city hall like an apple cart. You put one administration out and the other one in. This isn't just a newspaper story, Hildy. It's a career. Oh, Walter, I never figured it that way. Oh, you're still a doll-faced hick, that's why. We'll be the white-haired boys, Well, won't sure, we? sure. Well, Hildy, they'll be naming streets after you. Hildy Johnson Street. There'll be statues of you in the parks. By tomorrow morning, I'll bet you there's a Hildy Johnson cigar. I can see the billboards now. Light up with a Hildy Johnson. Oh, all right, Walter. Stop acting. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. Well, now you're talking. What are you going to do with William? Oh, we'll take him over to my private office. Uh, where's our phone? That one over there. Oh, Walter, how are you going to take him out? They'll see him. Well, we'll carry the desk over. Hello? You can't move the desk. It's crawling with cops outside. Well, we'll load out the window with pulleys. Now, quit stalling. Come on, start pounding out a lead. How much do you want on it? All the words you got. Hello, give me Duffy. Walter, can I call the mayor a bird of prey? Call him anything you like. Hello, Duffy, get set. We've got the biggest story of the year. Earl Williams captured by the Morning Post. Exclusive. Yeah. Killed him. Oh, Bruce. Hey, wait a minute, Duffy. What do you want here, Bruce? I came to see Hildy. Bruce, I'm awfully busy. Hildy, I just want you to ask you one question. How did you get out of jail? Not through any help of yours. Hey, listen, will you get out of here? Bruce, I'll explain the whole thing later. Where's Mama? She said she was coming up here. Well, she left. Oh, where did Mama go? Oh, I don't know. Out someplace. Oh, I don't understand. Did she get the money? No, no, no. She left in a hurry. The money's right there in my purse. Now, Bruce, $450 right there. Take it. Hildy? I'm taking the 9 o'clock train. Oh, let her alone, will you, buddy? Bruce, please. I just wanted you to answer one question. You don't want to come with me, do you? Oh, Bruce. Answer me, Hildy. You don't want to, do you? Now, look here, my you good man. You shut up, Burns. You're doing all this to her. She wanted to get away from you and everything you stand for. Hildy, are you going to give up everything for a man like this? Oh, no, I'm not, but something's happened, Bruce. Wait till I tell you. You tell him nothing. He's a spy. I'm not fool. a spy. Hello. Hilda, you're coming with me right now. Oh, no, Bruce. Give me just a second. Can't you see? This is the biggest thing in my life. Oh, I see what you are now. You're just like Walter Burns and all the rest. Sure, sure. That's what I am. Well, I'm glad I found out in time. I'm leaving, Hildy. Hello, Duffy. Get hold of Butcher Connor. Well, if you change your mind, I'm leaving on the 9 o'clock train. Well, where is he? Wait. Bruce, listen. Uh... If you want me, take me as I am instead of trying to turn me into a housewife. I'm not a suburban bridge player. I'm a newspaper man. That's all I wanted to know. Goodbye, Hildy. Hildy, have you got that lead? Have I? Boy, take a look at this. It's terrific. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Claudette Colbert, Fred McMurray, and Jack Carson, will bring you Act Three of His Girl Friday. And now we have an opportunity 
to take a look at the fall styles through the eyes of an expert, Miss Colma Flake, Western fashion editor of the famous publication Motion Picture Magazine. As a mere man, Miss Flake, I won't presume to ask you specific questions on a subject that I know nothing about. So won't you go just a, go right ahead and uh, give us a few highlights on current fashions? Well, Mr. Ruick, there are several important differences between this and last year's silhouettes. While skirts are slimmer and straighter, slide drape, uh, side da- drapery is used on some costumes, but only to accent the essential lines of the skirt. In other words, simplicity of line and careful cutting of the fabric are most important. Woolen dresses in soft colors are high style. Many of them are to be worn with short fur jackets. The color of the dress to blend with the fur. By the way, Barbara Stanwyck has such a costume in lovely beige and brown tones. Most women will be glad to hear that satin hats draped close to the head are in style. Worn with a woolen dress, they give that sophisticated look we all love. Paulette Goddard has ordered one in a stunning new light shade of brown. Black, of course, is more popular than ever. There is an effect of richness in many of the black costumes shown. This is achieved by touches of unexpected colors, especially olive, slate blue, or dull gold. The effect is made more striking by a single piece of handsome jewelry. If you have an heirloom piece in gold and black enamel, by all means wear it. Personally, I certainly congratulate you, Mr. Ruick, on offering this beautiful Scarlet O'Hara brooch at this time. It's just the thing from a style point of view as well as lovely in itself. The pure white of the simulated cameo against the glistening ebony background is very striking, and the gold finished setting is very rich looking. It's quite perfect at the neckline of a black dress or with one of the dark greens or soft blues so popular right now. To sum up, Styles will be simple and rich and distinguished looking this fall. And handsome jewelry pieces like this will be just the thing to complete the effect of simplicity and richness. Thank you, Miss Flake. Again, as a mere man, let me say that I'm glad those little satin hats are back again. I like them. And now let me tell all of you just once more how easy it is to get one of these handsome, simulated cameo brooches of the same design worn by Vivian Lee as Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. Just get an order blank from your dealer, or write your name and address on a piece of paper and mail it together with the wrappers from three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap and 15 cents in coin, no stamps, please, to Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. You'll be thrilled and delighted with the beauty and the fine craftsmanship of your Scarlet O'Hara brooch. With your brooch, you'll receive an illustrated order blank telling you how to get additional matching pieces to complete your Scarlet O'Hara ensemble. You can have a ring, bracelet, pendant, earrings, all of the same lovely Scarlet O'Hara design and all at amazing bargain prices. So don't delay. Send three wrappers and 15 cents in coin to Box 1, New York City, for your Scarlet O'Hara brooch tomorrow. Remember the address. Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. This offer is good only in the United States. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on the third act of His Girl Friday. A few more whirlwind minutes have passed, and the convict Earl Williams is still safe and sound in the roll-top desk. Hildy still types furiously to finish the story for the late edition, and Walter is still on the phone. Listen, Duffy, did you tell Bush to take a taxi that every minute counts? Well, who's he bringing with him? All right, stay near the phone. Butch is on his way over with four mugs. They're going to help us move off the desk. All we got to do is hold out for 15 minutes. The boys will be back. They'll be coming in here to phone. Hey, Williams, are you all right in there? Knock on the desk. Hey, listen, Williams. I'm going to knock three times. That's our signal, see? You get it? Answer with three knocks if you're okay. Atta, baby. Three knocks is me. Now, don't forget. You got enough air? Ah, good boy. Well, come on, Hildy. Tear into it. Don't sit there like a frozen robin. I just thought of something. You've messed up my whole life. Do you know that? Bruce is gone. His mother... 
What am I going to do? Oh, finish the story, Hildy. Duffy's waiting. I'd have been on that train by now. Come on, Hildy. Oh, what a sap I am falling for your line. Naming streets after well, me. Well, you've had a nice rest now. Get back to work, will you? Hello, who is it? Hey, boss, it's me. It's Louis. Now, wait a minute. Come on in quick. Listen, boss. Hey, what's the matter, Louie? Where'd you get that black eye? Boss. Where's Mrs. Baldwin? What'd you do with her? Where is she? You been in a fight? Down Western Avenue we was going, 65 miles an hour. You know what I mean? Hey, take that mush out of your mouth. Where's the old lady? I'm telling you, we run smack into a police patrol. You know what I mean? We busted it in half. Oh, was she hurt? Can you imagine bumping into a load of cops? They come rolling out like oranges. But what did you do with her? Search me. When I come to, I was running down 34th Street. Oh, Butterfingers. <laughs> be an old dame to take somewhere and you hand her over to the cops. What do you mean I hand her? The cops was on the wrong side of the street. Yeah, now everything's fine. She's probably squawking her head off in some police station. I don't think she's squawking much. You know what I mean? Well, oh, don't tell me. You mean she was killed? There's an awful good chance. Oh, my... Dad! Oh, this is the end. Oh, uh, my... it's fate, Hildy. What will be, will be. But what am I going to say to Bruce? What can I tell him? Oh, look, honey, if he really loves you, you won't have to tell him anything. Oh, I killed her. I'm responsible. Oh, what am I going to do? How can I ever face him again? Look at me, Hildy. I'm looking at you, you murderer. Oh, now, if it was my own mother, I'd carry on. You know I would for the paper. Louis, where did it happen? Western and 34th. I'm going out. Hey, we can do more right here. Now, be calm. Be calm? Be... How can I? Hey, listen. Boss, boss, it's the sheriff. Yeah, and the reporters from every sheet in town. Now we're in a sweet spot. Spot or no spot, I'm leaving. Don't open that door, Hildy. Just a minute, Johnson. Let me alone. Don't let it get away, Sheriff. Take your hands off. Hold there, boy. Hey, just a minute, Sheriff. Who do you think you are breaking in here like this? You can't bluff me, Burns. I don't care who you are or what paper you're editor. Let me go. Let me go, fellas. Something's happened to Mrs. Bull. Hang on to her. Hey, what's the idea? I'll tell you what the idea is. One of the prisoners was looking out of the jail window about an hour ago, and he saw a man come down the fire escape and into this window. That man was Earl Williams. What are you oh, doing, yes. Hildy? Hiding him for a scoop? Yeah, come on. I don't know anything about it. Let me out of here. She knows plenty. Come on, Sheriff. Give her the third degree. Where is he, Johnson? Where you got him? You're barking up the wrong tree, Sheriff. I'll give you three minutes to tell me where he is. Come on, where is he? All right. He went over to the hospital to call on Professor Egelhofer. What? Yeah, with a big bag of marshmallows. Here, lady, is this the place? Yes, yes, oh, it's the police officer. Mother, I'm so glad to see you. Are you all right? That's the man officer right there. What's the idea here? This lady claimed she was kidnapped, sir. What? They dragged me all the way down the stairs and put me in a taxi cab. Just a minute. Did this man here have anything to do with it? Now, listen, well, he I... he was the one in charge of the whole thing. He told them to kidnap me. Excuse me, madam, are you referring to me? You know you did. What about this, Burns? Kidnapping, huh? Oh, trying to frame me, huh? I never saw this woman before in my life. Oh, what a thing to say. Now, look here, madam. Be honest. If you were out joyriding, plastered, and getting to some scrape, why don't you admit it? Instead of accusing innocent people. Oh, you you ruffian. How dare you talk like that to me? He's just a little crazy, mother. I'll tell you something more. Yes? I'll tell you why he did it. Go on, madam. I was in here, and they had someone with them. They were hiding him. Hiding him? In here? Yes. Madam, that's a bare-faced lie. What was that? Burns has just banged on that desk. Yeah, but someone banged back. There's somebody in that desk. Earl Williams. It's Earl Williams. He's in the desk. Stand back, you men. Come out, Williams. Come out. Do you hear? We've got you covered. Open that desk. All right. You got me. Now, go ahead. Shoot me. Grab it. Grab that man. I got him, Sheriff. Take him down to the jail and swear out a warrant for the arrest of Walter Burns and Hildy Johnson. Sheriff Hartwell speaking. Oh, yes, Prostowski. Come over to the press room as soon as you can. The mayor and I are holding a couple of important birds. We want you to take their confession. Shake it up. Be over in ten minutes, mayor. Fine work, Pete. Fine work. You certainly delivered the goods. I'm proud of you. Look kind of natural with handcuffs on, don't they, Fred? <laughs> a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Aiding an escaped criminal and a little charge of kidnapping. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like about ten years apiece for you, Bert. Does it? Anytime you think you can lick the morning post, it's time for you to get out of town. Oh, your luck's not with you now. It isn't going to help you this time. You're through. Listen, the last man who said that to me cut his throat a week later. Oh, is that so? Yeah. We've been in worse jams than this, haven't we, Hildy? Nope. You forget the power that always watches over the morning post? Well, it's not with you now. Yeah, you're going to be in office about two days more. Yeah, and then we're pulling your nose right out of the feed bag. Oh, the power of the press. Listen, hmm. bigger men than you have found out what the power of the press is. Presidents and kings. Hello, Sheriff. Oh, but... Get out of here. You remember me? My name is Pettibone. Get out, get out, get out. Here's your reprieve, Sheriff. Did you hear me? Beat it. You can't bribe me. Now, my wife says... Hey, what is this? Get out of here. No, I won't. Here's your reprieve. I don't want to be a city sealer. Uh, 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 Pete, who is this man? Well, I don't know, Fred. Get out. Just a minute. 
Who was trying to bribe you? They wouldn't take the reprieve. What did I tell you? An unseen uh, power. Why, the man's insane. <laughs> frame up. Trying to hang an innocent man to win an election, That's huh? That's a lie. I never saw him before. Say, you, what's your name? Pettibone, Joe Pettibone. What's yours? When did you deliver this reprieve, Pettibone? Who did you talk to? They started right in bribing me. Well, who's they? Them. Those two men. Why, oh. that's absurd on the face of it. He's he's talking like a child. Out of the mouths of babes. Why, he's <laughs> insane or, or drunk or something. Why, uh, if this unfortunate man, Williams, has really been reprieved, I personally am tickled to death. Aren't you, Pete? Oh, sure. You'd hang your own mother to be reelected. Uh, that's a horrible thing to say about anybody, Miss Johnson. Well, uh, never mind that now. Let's have your story, Mr. Pettibone. Well... Nineteen years ago, I married Mrs. Pettibone. Yes, yes, and... well, you can skip all that. <laughs> Sheriff? Sheriff, this reprieve is authentic. Our commonwealth has been spared the painful necessity of shedding blood. Oh, get down off of the soapbox. Save that for the tribune. <clears throat> uh, Pete, take those handcuffs off, my friend. I was just going to. Well, hurry up, hurry up. I'm amazed at you doing a thing like that. <laughs> I, uh, I was only doing my duty... Uh, Nothing personal in it. No, of course not. Of course <laughs> not. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, Pettibone. Here's a picture of my wife. Oh, yes. A very fine-looking woman. Uh, she's good enough for me. But if my wife heard uh, that... I... I understand that perfectly, Mr. Pettibone. And as long as I am mayor... Which ought to be about three hours more, I'd say. Uh, Just long enough for us to put out a special edition asking for your recall. And your arrest. You know, you little boys ought to get about ten years apiece, I think. Now, I wouldn't make any hasty decisions, Mr. Burns. You might run into a thumping big libel suit. <laughs> You're going to run into the governor. <laughs> well, my old friend, the governor, and I understand each other perfectly. Yes, so do I. So I... do you what you who do. Uh, and now, Mr. Pettibone, if you'll come with us, we'll take you over to the warden's office and deliver this reprieve. Come along, Pettibone. So long, Walter. So long, you crook. Right this way. <laughs> Wait until those two future bail- jailbirds read the morning post tomorrow. <sighs> that was a tight squeeze. Hello, give me Duffy. That was the worst jam we've been in in a long time. Yeah. What? Well, where is he? Well, get him. Do you remember the time we stole old Lady Haggerty's stomach off the coroner's position? Yeah. We proved she'd been poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> we had to hide out for a week. Do you remember that? The Shoreland Hotel. That's how we happened. Yeah, to... don't forget, we could have gone to jail for that, too. You know that. Yeah, I guess we could. Yeah. You know, maybe you're right, Hildy. It's a bad business. You're better off out of it. You better get going. Where'll I go? To Bruce, of course. Well, you know he's gone. He took the 9 o'clock train. Well, just send him a wire and get on that train. He'll be waiting for you at the station when you get to Albany. Get going, Hildy. Get going, Hildy. What is that with you? Can't you understand? I'm doing something noble for once in my life. Now, go on, get out of here before I change my mind. Walter, listen. Go on, it's tough enough now. Just a minute. Go on, send the fellow a wire. He'll be waiting when you get there. Oh, I get it. The same old act, isn't it? Trying to push me out of here, figuring that I'll be stupid enough to want to stay. I know I deserve that, Hildy. Hello. Oh, wait a minute, Duffy. But this time you're wrong, Hildy. I made fun of Bruce and Albany and all that sort of thing. You know why? Why? Because I was jealous of him. Because I was sore at him for offering you the sort of life that I can't give you. That's what you want, isn't it? Well, I I could stay and do the story and take the train in the morning. No, 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 no. Forget it. Goodbye, dear, and good luck. Oh, hold on a second, Duffy. I'll answer that. Hello, Hildy Johnson. Hildy, this is Bruce. Bruce? Hildy, something awful is happening. Oh, Bruce, not again. What jail are you in? The 24th precinct. (laughs) But what for? Trying to pass counterfeit money. What do you mean, counterfeit money? Where did you get it? You gave it to me. I did? Oh. Hilly, I've got to get out of here. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll fix it up somehow. Hey, Duffy, hang on. Oh. oh, no, honey, don't cry, please. I I didn't mean to make you cry. You never cried before. I, I thought you were really sending me away to Bruce. I didn't know you had him locked up. I thought you were going to stand by and let me go off with Bruce and not do a thing about it. Oh, go on. What do you think? I wasn't a chump. I thought you didn't love me. Well, what were you thinking with? I don't know. Well, what are you standing there gawking for? We have to get him out of jail. Send Louie down and give him some honest money so he can go back to Albany where he belongs. Sure, sure. Uh, hey, Duffy, tell Louie to stand by. Yeah, we're coming over to the office. No, don't worry about the story. Hildy's going to write it. No, she's not quitting. She never intended to. We're going to get married. <laughs> Can we go on a honeymoon this time, Walter? Sure, honey. Hey, Duffy, you can be managing editor. No, not permanently, just for a couple of weeks while we're on our honeymoon. Oh, Walter. I don't know where we're going. 
Hey, Hilly, where are we going? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls, Duffy. A whole two weeks, Walter? What? I can't hear you, Duffy. Strike. What strike? In Albany? Oh, I can't ask Hilby to spend... We'll spend our honeymoon in Albany. Okay, Duffy. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Come on, Hilly, we've got to go to Albany. Say, I, uh, I wonder if Bruce can put us up. The curtain falls, and whatever the future of Hildy and her boss, I imagine it won't be dull. Now Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray return to the microphone. Well, it seems a little quiet here, CB. Hmm. No guns, no telephones, no sirens. How can you stand it, Fred? If I ever acquire a newspaper, you two are hired. <laughs> and instead of seeing a picture or listening to the radio for entertainment, I, I'll, I'll just go down to the office. I wouldn't count too much on the profit, CB. Funny thing, though, the last time I played one of these reporter parts, it was in a picture with Claudette, the Gilded Lily. <laughs> and they tell me that Claudette, as a foreign correspondent, has a very sharp eye for news in Arise, My Love, that you just finished the Paramount. Well, C.B., this may not be news, but I have enjoyed coming back to the Lux Radio Theater, and I'm still a staunch supporter of Lux Soap. I think it's a grand complexion care, and I use it all the time, but it's possible you've heard me say that before. Mm -hmm. That's something we can't hear too often about Lux Soap, Claudette, because we know it's true. And because it comes from you. What's the prospect for next week, C.B.? The prospect for next Monday, Fred? Well, we're, we're flying high. Our play is Wings of the Navy. And our stars are George Brent, Olivia de Havilland, and John Payne. It's an exciting drama of adventure in the air and romance on the ground. A story of heroism and sacrifice with George Brent and John Payne as aviators and Olivia de Havilland as the girl they both love. I remember the picture, C.B., and I know you'll have a thrilling play next Monday night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And in the words of one W. Winter, awkward to both of you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents George Brent Olivia de Havilland and John Payne in Wings of the Navy. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as Sheriff, Edward Marr as Louie, Lou Merrill as Mayor, Chester Clute as Pettibone, Warren Ash as McHugh, Charles Seal as Murphy, Edwin Max as Endicott, Verna Felton as Mrs. Baldwin, Tony Hughes as Earl Williams, Sherman Nichols as Duffy, and Catherine Keyes and Hal Gerard. Fred McMurray is currently appearing on the screen in the Paramount picture Rangers of Fortune. Jack Carson is featured in the RKO picture Lucky Partners. His Girl Friday was based on the front page by Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur. The Scarlet O'Hara brooch offered you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap is designed after one worn by Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind, the Selznick International picture produced by David O. Selznick and released by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.